Hello, friends and family of Grace Lutheran Church. Even though we are not going to be having a service in the sanctuary together as a as a, the body of Christ this week, I still wanted to talk to you about our hymn of the day because you're going to get a chance to sing it with us when you follow along to the worship service we post to our YouTube channel. So let's get into talking about our hymn of the day for the fifth Sunday in Lent. It is, If God Himself Be For Me. It's number 724 in the Lutheran Service Book. This hymn, uh, you may recognize the first uh, sentence there, if God himself be for me, comes from Romans chapter 8, which begins, if God himself is for us, then who can be against us? Paul is writing in Romans chapter 8, uh, in verses 31 through 38, starts with that, if God is for us, who can be against us? And he ends by saying, of course, the answer to that question, nothing. If God is for us, then nothing can be against us. And we are not going to be reading Romans chapter 8. Well, that's a lie. We are going to be reading Romans chapter 8 in our service this week, but we're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. And this is for, uh, based on verses 31 through 39. Um, but those verses, we can't separate them from the beginning of Romans chapter 8, right? Paul is building on what he's already said. So, in our reading from Romans chapter 8, our epistle reading, verses 1 through 11, I feel like I've said that a zillion times, but anyway, um, Paul is talking about how the blood of Christ frees us from the condemnation of the law and from the guilt of our sin and how the Holy Spirit now gives us new life in Christ. And we know that that new life in Christ is a life that will never end, even if this earthly life uh, does, or even when this earthly life does. Um, this hymn talks about how those gifts that Christ wins for us, um, by his death and his resurrection, uh, the gifts of, uh, freedom from death and sin and eternal life, talks about how those gifts are applied to our daily lives. And I could talk about each of these verses individually with you guys, but you guys, there are 10 of them. So I'm not going to do that to you. Um, now, so you're going to be watching this, uh, service in a video, right? And so you may be tempted when you get to this part of the service, this is going to be right before the, um, sermon to just be like, oh, I'm just going to skip that 10 verse hymn the deacon has talked about. Please don't do that. This is a really good hymn. I know I say that about all of our hymns that have like eight, nine, 10 verses, but, but it really is a good hymn. If, if an author has taken the time to write 10 verse in it, verses, and if we have, uh, decided to put all of them into our hymnal, you know that they're there for a reason, right? They're good and they're important for you. So please don't skip it. Please listen to it. Um, I promise you it will be good. As I said before, this hymn walks through those gifts of Christ and it talks about how they apply to our daily lives, um, kind of personalizes it for us. And I think it's timely to be singing about this right now as we deal with this um, pandemic pandemic in our world. Um, you may have seen something going around your Facebook page um, about COVID-19. It's an acronym that people have decided to come up with for this. Um, COVID is already an acronym, right? But uh, um, people have decided that now COVID should stand for Christ Conquers Over Viruses and Infectious Diseases. Um, and then it quotes from Joshua 1 9 that's where the 19 is and I have to admit to you guys that the first time I saw this on my Facebook feed I rolled my eyes I was like oh great here we go talking about how Christ is gonna save us miraculously from coronavirus even if my neighbor who's infected coughs directly into my face and I breathe in their germ droplets Christ is gonna miraculously protect me uh, from the coronavirus I'm here to tell you that's Probably not the case. Christ does protect us from the coronavirus, but he does it through people like our healthcare professionals and the government that's telling you to stay home and uh, slow down the spread of the virus. So, um, but but Christ isn't going to miraculously protect us all from the coronavirus. And so I kind of, um, it just made me roll my, it felt kind of shallow to me when I, when I first looked at that post. Um, but now that all of you who have shared that post are uh, sufficiently offended, I'm going to tell you that the more I think about it, the more I change my mind on that. Um, 
Christ has conquered over viruses and infectious diseases. And he's conquered over them because even though they may seem to win a small victory in this world, they cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. They can't separate us from those gifts that he gives us. Um, even if coronavirus should take my life, right, it still has not won a victory over me. Um, I still have my gifts of salvation and eternal life through the blood of Christ. So I am not going to be afraid if coronavirus gets me um, because nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord, even if coronavirus uh, or anything else that we deal with in our world on a daily basis. But this seems to be what, what's really on the forefront of everybody's minds right now. Even if it wins a victory over my body and puts me in the grave right now, Christ has a greater victory that will be fully realized on the last day when he comes back and he raises that body that has been defeated by death out of the grave, perfects it, and brings it back to life to live with him forever. So there is nothing to be afraid of in, in this time. No matter what trials and tribulations we go through in this life, none of it can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul's writing about. That's what we're talking about on Sunday. And that's what this hymn is all about. So I am going to leave you with these words uh, to close out this sort of long video, I assume. I don't know how long I've been speaking, but probably a while. Uh, and we're just, I'm going to read for you the second half of verse 7 and then verses 8 and 10. So it says, Though life from me be taken and everything I own, I trust in you unshaken and cleave to you alone. No danger, thirst, or hunger, no pain or poverty, no earthly tyrant's anger shall ever vanquish me. Though earth should break asunder, which it sometimes feels like it is, my fortress you shall be. No fire or sword or thunder shall sever you from me. So, verse 10, my heart with joy is springing, I am no longer sad. My soul is filled with singing, your sunshine makes me glad. The sun that cheers my spirit is Jesus Christ, my King. The heaven I shall inherit makes me rejoice and sing. So I look forward to rejoicing and singing with you all virtually uh, over this weekend. If you don't know how to find our services, you can um, either visit our Facebook page or our YouTube page, and um, you'll be able to find the link uh, on our Facebook or see the video right there on YouTube. So uh won't be seeing you this Sunday, but um, hope you guys are all staying safe and um, let us know if uh, there's anything else that we can do to keep you spiritually fed during this difficult time. All right, we'll see you later.